was ready to learn some new yoga poses. <laughs> squatting position and you slowly get down to the floor without ripping a hole in your crotch and then you pause and breathe. No, I'm joking. My name is Josh Friedman. I come from Los Angeles, California. I currently live in Sofia, Bulgaria. I have zero Yoga skills, zero. That's not true. <laughs> okay, I've practiced yoga twice in the past decade or so. But I'm not here to speak to you about yoga. I am here to talk about freedom, and specifically finding freedom in the globalized world in which we live. Having spoken briefly with some of you, I think we have some things in common in the sense that we all haven't necessarily spent all of our lives in the places in which we were born and raised. So I'm curious briefly to hear from a few of you in the audience. Where are you from and where do you live right now, perchance, why? Thank you for sharing. In the general dictionary definition sense of the word, freedom means an ability, and a power, a power to do, to act, to say, to think, that whatever it is that you want to do, to say, to think, etc. But in reality, freedom really means something different to each and every one of us. To some of you, it might mean being free to practice yoga. To me, as I previously alluded to, freedom could possibly be this feeling that I get when I can cross a street on a red light with a police officer sitting or standing in front of me. That's something that triggers a sense of freedom in me. In the broader scope, there's political freedom, economic freedom, spiritual freedom, religious freedom, health freedom, environmental freedom. We could go on and on and on. I would like to hear a little bit more from you. What does freedom mean to you? Would anyone like to share? Not to be afraid to show yourself and not to be afraid to be exactly how you feel, who you are, and not to be judged for this. I think for me it's freedom. Anyone else? To be yourself and show the world yourself without uh, thinking or oh, will it be this too much for these people? Would I like be ridiculous in front of them and like not just act the way you want? Also, not to be told what it's okay and what it's not okay. Like mm, I'm not referring to the moral or ethical codex, but. For example, in our country, we are told many things. Um, and what is your Russia, I'm from Russia. So we can be told how we should look, uh, how we should express ourselves. I think it's not, it's not good. So freedom, when you are not told what you should be. Are there any places in which you feel free? Here. Barcelona? Barcelona. And why, why is that? Uh, because here people are very um, involved in their, their own life, so they don't uh, feel necess necessity to dictate and to interfere in other people's life. They let themselves to be and let other people to be. And I think it's amazing. And 
That's why this place is special for me and for many people who have chosen this city to live in. Anyone else? Any places in the world? They don't necessarily need to be physical places. Any places in the world that make you feel free? Rainbow the Gathering. It's not really like a country or anything, but it's like a gathering of like people that want to live freely and they're like they go to somewhere like in wild nature and they can be naked and they can sing together and accept like everything that they want to express, you know. Are they a nomad tribe? Uh, it's not really a tribe, like it's uh, it's just, a, it's just a gathering of people that want to, you know, come together from a more honest place and more connected to nature and, you know, I don't know. It happens all over the world, like this, this kind of... Uh, Can I add a little bit about freedom? Please. <coughs> For me, it really has no physical place. Much to do with the place, even though I also stayed in uh, communes like you described. Yeah. This is really a very freeing experience <coughs> when you just start to for freedom. Those places where people are aspiring this kind of life, it's very nourishing to continue in your search. But eventually, what I feel now is the only freedom I need is from my own judgment about what I have to be, what I should do, what I shouldn't do, what I should not be. Uh, and all kind of conditions I'm carrying in my head, all kind of beliefs I'm still carrying in my head about uh, what I'm like, I know, I cannot be happy if I'm not earning an, uh, a great amount of money. And this is just a belief, and if it's set in my head really strongly and I cannot let go of it, obviously I'm not free. <laughs> and many, many beliefs or thoughts like this, which actually I still uh, nourish for some reason, I don't know why they are there, it's maybe the conditioning my parents, my culture, or my teachers, or whatever, but I'm the one who is still holding on to them and uh, not allowing myself, like the girl said before, just be as I am, just without judgment. And uh, I think this is for me now where freedom stands, is this, uh, the freedom from those conditions. I agree. I, I'm actually going to talk about that so. <laughs> <laughs> We don't necessarily need to put a label on that. We could refer to it as mental freedom or psychological freedom or social freedom or freedom of expression. What I've found from my own journeys, from my own international living, is that a lot of these freedoms tend to build on one another. They tend to work together with one another. And if you do find a place in which you have psychological freedom, social freedom, mental freedom, and that's not necessarily a physical place, but if you find that place, that space, on top of that platform, you might be building a life of financial freedom. You might be building a life of political freedom, of economic freedom. And I like to see a stacking of different freedoms. And there are, very, there are a variety of different strategies you can go about in order to expand or maximize the amount of freedom in your life. I happen to have stumbled upon, through my international living, something called the offshore industry. Some of you may have heard of it, some of you may have not. The term offshore might have a very negative connotation, some of you. Maybe you've heard about some corrupt politician stealing money from his people and stashing it in anonymous offshore bank accounts. Or maybe when you hear the term offshore, you think of some evil rich people who are avoiding or evading taxes and moving their businesses and their assets offshore. Well, I found through my own experience that it's not just evil rich people or corrupt politicians who can go offshore. Myself, 
I am an American citizen. I happen to be living in Bulgaria. I'm a resident of Bulgaria. However, I also happen to like to spend my winters in warmer places, such as around the Mediterranean. I'm also flirting with the idea of spending my winters in Latin America. I am a journalist, and I travel for work and pleasure. I love to travel, I love to explore. And I spend a lot of my life in many different countries. In a sense, I have offshored my life. I have internationalized my life. Now this offshore industry focuses primarily on economic freedom. There's something called flag theory. It basically means that you plant a bunch of flags in a bunch of different places. You diversify your assets and you diversify your life and by doing so you greatly expand the amount of economic freedom you enjoy. So one flag is your citizenship. You can have citizenship in one country or ideally multiple countries as that gives you more freedom to move around in several different places. Another flag is your residence, where you live. That can apply to taxes in the sense that if you are a tax resident of a certain country and you are making your money or you have your business or your income in another place, if this one country in which you are a resident has a friendly tax structure, then you can be keeping all of the money you make. You can legally avoid paying taxes. This is a core element of this offshore industry, of this flag theory, of this internationalization process so that you can enjoy more economic freedom, so that you can keep the fruits of your labor. Another flag is banking. Where do you stash your cash, per se? Where do you keep your money? Are you keeping your assets in a country or a place that is separate from where your citizenship is, from where your residence is, from where your business, that's another flag, where is your business, is your business set up in a business friendly location. And this can go on and on with more and more elements of your life. By diversifying your assets and by diversifying your life, you are protecting yourself against the risk of governments or even in certain cases uh, other central authorities, maybe gangs or mafias or whatnot, coming in and taking away something that belongs to you. That could be physical, it could be another type of freedom. And as you embark upon this process of diversifying your life, and you don't need to do this strictly in the economic sense, in order to enjoy more freedom by internationalizing your life, you don't necessarily need to have a bank account here and a residence here and citizenship here and multiple passports. It gives you a plethora of opportunity. But what you realize as you go about the process, economic or not, is that by using more of the world, by going to more places and finding opportunities in other places, you can enjoy a variety of newfound freedom in your life. So I have residence 
in Bulgaria. There are tax advantages to that, but by no means did I go to Bulgaria because I wanted to slash my tax bill. I went to Bulgaria because at times I can be a bit of a free spirit. I don't practice yoga so much, but nonetheless I can be a bit of a free spirit. I went to Bulgaria for a new experience. I decided I was going to go there for a year and meet a bunch of new people and have these fresh experiences. And then I'd go back to the US because I didn't believe there was opportunity for me in Bulgaria. Well, I showed up and in my first few weeks and months there, that was the freest I had ever felt. It was the freest I had ever felt in my entire life. And that was not because I had the opportunity to be a tax resident of Bulgaria and to do what is called applying for the foreign earned income exclusion. I know that sounds like a jumbled mess. This is something that applies to US citizens and taxation. I did not feel so free in Bulgaria because I had newfound tax and regulatory advantages. I felt free because I had stepped into a world of social freedom. It so happens with me, maybe it's the case with you, that when I go to a new place, suddenly I become a little more outgoing. Suddenly I want to try out new experiences. Maybe I try yoga, maybe I try tantra, maybe I go to networking events and clubs and parties that I wouldn't otherwise. Planting a flag in Bulgaria opened up a world of opportunity to me. It opened up professional freedom. I went there with the mindset that I was going to come back to the U.S. after having my fun for a year because what opportunity is there in Bulgaria? What opportunity is there in this country, in southeastern Europe, that's supposedly the most corrupt and the poorest country in the entire European Union? What opportunity would there be for an American in this little place in southeastern Europe? But lo and behold, I found that I had all this professional opportunity. I'm a journalist, I'm passionate about geopolitics. I realized that in Bulgaria, I could go to neighboring countries where they're having exciting events, large protests or even riots, elections of geopolitical importance, or maybe there's, dare I say, a terrorist attack happening within the vicinity. I could go to these different places and cover these different events, and in turn, I found that I had this professional opportunity, this professional freedom that I lacked in the United States, that I lacked in California. And in line with that professional opportunity was opportunity to travel. I am passionate about travel. I love to travel, and I love having the freedom to travel. And it so happens that in Bulgaria, I have much more freedom to travel internationally, particularly, than I do living in the US. Now, I'm from Los Angeles, and Mexico is right nearby. I could hop and hop, play hopscotch with the border, go back and forth between Mexico and LA in order to get my international travel in. But no, no, that's, that's not what I do to do there. In Bulgaria, there are cheap flights to and from the country going all over Europe and beyond. I can go to the bus station at night, pick a different route, and end up in a different country in the morning. It's very simple, it's very cheap, especially compared to travel to and from the United States. These are opportunities, these are freedoms that arose in my life as a result of me planting a flag in Bulgaria. I didn't even know it. I thought that I was just going there to 
have a great time, learn the language a little bit, experience a new culture. I did not realize that I was sticking a flag in a new country, in a new place, in a new place that would provide me, surprising to some, more economic freedom. But in turn, it would provide me more social freedom, more cultural freedom, more travel freedom, actually more financial freedom too. Bulgaria is much cheaper than the US. By living in Bulgaria, I slash my expenses, not just my tax bill, but my overall expenses, and that in turn allows me to prioritize that which I want to do with my life and that I want to spend money on. It gives me more choice. Now enough about me. I see some of you have already internationalized your lives and I see some of you have already found more freedom by doing so. For some of you, maybe going abroad, maybe planting a flag in another country is not necessarily going to bring you more freedom. Maybe you have so much mental clarity, maybe you have so much happiness and opportunity wherever you're at, or maybe you don't even view the world in that way and things are more of a mental game, a psychological game, and freedom isn't a matter of going from one place to another. But some of you might be interested in planting a flag in a different country or countries or embarking upon a trip, a quest to find more freedom or just to see what is out there in the world. And as is the case with me, there is this opportunity for you to go offshore, even if you're not this evil rich person or a corrupt politician, or even if you're not some person who wants to play the flag theory game with bank accounts and second passports and second residence and businesses in Dubai or in Panama or in Singapore. Maybe it's a matter of finding this optimal place for you to do yoga and get in touch with nature. Practically speaking, this does require some money or some other form of currency. Most people aren't just going to listen to a speech, and then tomorrow grab their stuff, maybe stick it in just hand luggage as I like to travel and go move to Bulgaria, or go move to India, or go move to Barcelona. So, I would like to leave you with some practical tips, some pointers about how this could be done with a lot of money or how it could be done with little to no money. It's very much of use in this globalized world in which we are living to have some what is called location-independent income, or a location-independent business. In my mind, there really is no such thing as a purely location-independent business. If you were to go to Antarctica, for instance, it's probably going to be slightly difficult for you to run your business or for you to make money online. But nonetheless, I think you get the point. If you already have a business that is location independent or that can move around to different places in different countries, be great. You're ready to go. Just go, as I like to say. Perchance some of you have different skills that would allow you to travel and make money. Maybe those skills are things that you didn't even contemplate have value in different places. For instance, in my case, in the United States, being able to speak English fluently is not of much value. 
If I apply for a job and I say, hey, look at me, I'm a fluent English speaker, they're going to look at me like I'm crazy and say, oh, congratulations, you must have passed kindergarten. <laughs> However, there are some people who make a living traveling the world just off their ability to speak English, and that could come in different forms. It might be through private lessons, it might be through Skype lessons, it might be working in different English teaching jobs in different countries, etc. All of you have skills. I believe some of you are actually already traveling the world as a yoga teacher or some sort of spiritual or yoga professional. In this globalized world in which we are living, there is incredible opportunity to put your show on the road, whatever show that may be. There are many, many skills that can travel with you and that can earn you money. But at the same time, in this globalized world, there's something that's been sprouting called the sharing economy. And through this sharing economy, you don't even necessarily need to have a job. You could travel the world making money, or maybe even not, maybe just bartering, by making use of these newfound opportunities and platforms. Perchance some of you have heard or have frequently used Airbnb or Uber or some other ride-sharing platform, maybe Blah Blah Car. When it comes to travel and international living, a couple of major expenses are accommodation and transportation where you sleep, and how you get from point A to point B. There are other expenses, but these are really the two core expenses. And in this world we live in, with this sharing economy, and to some extent what I like to call the nomadic economy, you can merely partner with people in order to cover these core expenses. Say you have an apartment and you decide to go off to India on a trip. You could rent out your own apartment on Airbnb or on some other platform, and that could help fund your trip. If you want to do it on the cheap, there is couch surfing. You can stay on people's couches and not have to pay a penny for accommodation. Even better yet, there's something called house sitting. It may sound like a very simple concept. You go off for a week, someone comes over to your house, a house sit for you. Well, this is actually an industry now that can allow you to, in a sense, travel the world for free. There are house sitting platforms. You get registered on some house sitting platform and then you get to live in people's homes. Some of these places are even mansions or they're on the water in beautiful exotic locations. You can live in people's homes free of charge or even make money doing so. And this sharing or nomadic economy applies to transportation as well. There are all these ride shares. You could be smart about it, maybe even turn it into a business. You can be on blah blah car, driving from one point to another, picking up people along the way, collecting some money for doing so. Or maybe you hitchhike around the world. Through my travels, I have run into people who have hitchhiked very impressively across continents. I met someone who hitchhiked across Asia, then 
was thinking, is this really true? So I followed his next hitchhiking journey on Facebook as he hitchhiked across the U.S. There are ways to do this international living game, this flag theory game, this offshore world, whatever you'd like to call it, while making a lot of money or even while not making any money at all. Or maybe even while making 21st century digital money like cryptocurrencies. There are all these opportunities that are out there nowadays to fund your travels, to fund an international lifestyle, to raise revenue, and to drive down expenses. And in the process, this allows you, practically speaking, to go on a quest for freedom, to plant flags in different places around the world so that you could go to a warm place in the winter and enjoy your yoga practice or your socializing. So that you could take your business to a location that is friendly to businesses. So that you can take your income to a place or many places in which you get to keep that which you earn. These are all opportunities that arise when you internationalize your life. And this is an opportunity to stack the various types of freedom that you so treasure. Freedom has a different meaning to each and every one of us. But that doesn't mean that we cannot find the various freedoms that we love in various places in the world. Freedom for me might be over here, freedom for you might be over there. Maybe you don't need to go anywhere to find freedom. Maybe it already exists inside of you, inside your head, inside your body, and that's great. Maybe for you, as in the case with me, you have a spirit of an explorer, and you only feel free when you're traveling around on a quest to find freedom. Ultimately, it's up to you. We have many choices in life, in this globalized world, and even if there is tyranny encroaching upon us, we have the freedom to do what I like to call just going. Maybe you just go to a place inside your head and find freedom. Maybe you just go to a bunch of countries and plant a bunch of flags all over the world. Mm -hmm. Whatever it is, it is your choice, it is your life, and it is your opportunity to find freedom wherever and however you like. Thank you very much for joining me here in the free place of Barcelona, Catalonia, Spain. And I hope you all find whatever freedom it is you're looking for.